hey guys and welcome back so if you guys missed my first video then you can go ahead and check that out i will link it above here i hope everyone has gotten a snack and uh, took a potty break because this is going to be a long one so here are the different fabrics that you're going to need um i listed it in detail down in the description box i wanted to show you guys how i like to prepare my fabric i like to cut the muslin first and i make sure to match up um edge to edge because a lot of times when they're folding the muslin they're not matching it edge to edge and sometimes the grain line can be a little bit off so make sure you do that to all of your fabrics once you've had all your layers cut out layers meaning your face layer your lining layer your underlining um and your structure layer now you want to go ahead and underline your face layers and i have a detailed video i will link that above here and i like to uh, hang those pieces the done pieces uh up on a hanger and hang them on my door when i'm finished with them here they are all finished and i like to um, section them off now i have my bodice pieces and i'm putting them right sides together and i'm sewing them down the princess seams make sure to pin this guys because if you don't your um bust curve may look a little bit off and then i'm also going to do this front skirt and the back skirt making sure to insert the zipper and here i am sewing everything together right sides together with a one centimeter seam allowance uh, i wanted to take this time out to thank the sponsor of this video uh, metatron fabrics they uh so kindly gave me the satin and the lace to work with for this dress and i'm very grateful thank you guys their link will be below in the description box here i'm doing a stay stitch and notice that i'm not uh sewing around um when i hit the corners i'm not sewing a curve there i'm making sure to sew off the edge and then pivot and then come back and sew so that corner is nice and sharp and you want to do that for both sides of your sweetheart neckline that just helps us um it's a guide uh, for attaching the the structure layer later and now i'm also assembling all of my skirt so i'm assembling the princess seams of <coughs> excuse me the princess seams of the uh the skirt front and the princess seams of the back and i'm also sewing in the zipper i'm not going to sew the side seams yet and here i'm showing you that i need to go ahead and stay stitch the top of the back pieces that's very important because it's backless so you want to make sure that it doesn't stretch or warp at all and now i'm inserting my zipper and i like to sew as close to the zipper tape as possible because i like my invisible zippers to look like the continuation of the center back seam rather than you being able to see a zipper there. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish off the center back seam. I'm going to insert the gore in the center back. I love um, having gores in my center back. I know y'all probably gonna get tired of that. All of my designs have gores, but I love the way it looks uh, when you flare out the train. So this one has a gore in the center back and I'm going to go ahead and sew that in. And then I'm also going to do up the back princess seams once again with a one centimeter seam allowance, making, to sew, uh, making sure to sew all the way down to the end and back stitch. I did forget to mention that in the front that I did leave an opening for the slit, um, but then I later sewed that together. This is what it looks like on the dress form. The side seams are not sewn. I just like to make sure that it actually fits on the dress form um, before I sew the side seams. So it fits and some pieces or the gore piece doesn't match, but that's fine because we will fix that later. And I'm gonna go back to my machine and make sure to go ahead and sew the side seams. This is what it looks like once the side seams are sewn. It's nice and smooth now since the side seams are sewn. Um, yeah, so this is what it looks like. Um, I'm not paying any attention to the tension that I've, I have here because the, the neckline is going to be a little bit lower um, when we put the structure piece on, so that's fine. And I just want to show you guys what it looks like once the side seams are sewn. The next thing I'm going to do is steam it. You want to make sure that your iron is not too hot. You don't want to burn the fabric and you want to have something to smooth the fabric out with. So I'm using my pressing ham and I am literally um, ironing and steaming the piece. Now uh, it does get a little bit wet. That's why I like to do it at this stage because I leave it time to dry while I'm working on the structure piece. And now I am working on the structure. I'm uh, combining the skirt and the bodice pieces and I'm cutting it out of fusible interfacing. 
as well as uh, the muslin. So here it is all fused together and I'm gonna go ahead and start the structure. Now I have a lot of questions on how I do my structure and I've gotten this, this is not my method y'all. I've got this um, solely from the Corset Academy. I have adopted it a little bit, but this is what I like to do. So I start by uh, tracing out the shape of the neckline and also the bust line. You should have uh, had notches there so you can know where your bust line is. And I'm just tracing that out. And I stop uh, the bottom of this cut piece where my under bust is. So you can take that measurement onto yourself. You should already have a measurement uh, taken. Here it is fused on and now I'm going to start uh, marking where my bones are you have to mark it with pencil because if you don't it's not going to uh, be even so i like to measure down a centimeter from my neckline and mark a centimeter on both sides since this is a pretty deep v then i'm measuring four centimeters from my bust line and i'm making a mark there and i'm also going to do the same thing on the other side And then from the bust line, I'm going to measure up three centimeters and I'm going to make a mark there. And then I'm going to connect those lines. And then I'm finding the center of my bottom line that I marked. And I'm going to, um, before I square a line down, I'm finding my waistline notch and I'm going to mark my waistline so I know where it is. I'm marking this line lighter so I know that there's not gonna be a bone sewn there. And then I'm going to measure down and I'm marking to my waistline and then for my waistline, I'm measuring down 13 centimeters and marking that as the end of the bone. Now, going back, I would make my bone extend probably to the bottom of where the, the interfacing stops because this was not long enough. Um, and now I'm uh, putting my ruler kind of square with where the centimeter mark is on both sides and I'm putting uh, lines there. We're gonna put uh, two sets of bones there to support that neckline. Now here on my side front piece, I'm marking out my bust line first and then I'm measuring from my apex to where I want my cup to stop and I've actually measured that on my dress form. And then I'm marking uh, my underbust and I'm just connecting that in kind of like a cup kind of shape. And then I'm tracing that onto a piece of interfacing and we're gonna go ahead and fuse this on as well and this creates the cup of the side front piece. and I'm going to make sure to cut two of those. And then I'm gonna take them over to my ironing, uh, my ironing board and fuse them on. I'm just making sure that everything lines up and it does. So let's go ahead and fuse them on. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's fused. I'm gonna go ahead and redraw that bust line. Make sure that it's nice and prominent. And then I'm going to mark out the bones for this piece. Now I'm gonna start by marking, um, uh, I'm gonna start by making that bottom bone there. That's gonna be kind of like our underwire kind of situation. And then I'm also going to measure down from our bust piece. I'm gonna measure down the four centimeters and put a mark there. And then I'm going to kind of curve that one downwards. That's gonna support the bottom of the bust. And then I'm also going to mark out the waistline and draw a faint line there. And then square a line down from where that ends. Now it kind of doesn't matter where it ends, but um, I like to make it in the middle of the bust line and the under bust. So that's what I did. And then I'm also marking, um, squaring a line down 13 centimeters. You should make it longer. I'm gonna mark a line three centimeters up, just like how we did on the other one, and square that line to the end of the cut piece. And then I'm also going to um, add a diagonal because we need something to support uh, the side of the bust. So I'm gonna measure two centimeters from my princess seam and I'm putting a, a line diagonal to where the kind of um, the strap knot, the strap uh, part is. 
Now we have all of the pieces done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew my structure pieces together, right sides together. Um, sewing all the way down, making sure that we're at a one centimeter seam allowance. And I'm also gonna mark a bone at the center of our side back piece. And then I'm also assembling the spaghetti straps because I like to um, do them at this point because if I don't, I will forget and then I'll lose the strap pieces and it's just a mess. So I'm trimming them down and turning them out and I'm gonna set them aside until I'm ready for them. And then now I am taking the structure layer, the front of it, and I am top stitching the seam allowance towards the center. I'm top stitching that all the way down. I like to top stitch it rather than press it open because I don't have to worry about two sides of the seam allowance, just the one. Once I finish top stitching that, I'm going to stay stitch it the same way that I stay stitched the face pieces uh, to keep everything nice and even and to stop uh, the neckline from warping or losing its shape. And now I am putting it onto the dress form, making sure that it fits because y'all, you make sure it fits. Now I'm putting the face layer over the structure just to make sure that the face layer still meets the side seams with the structure underneath, and it does. So now it's time to sew the bones on, and I am easing in, uh, basically pushing the extra fabric underneath the bone, and the bone is um, also gathered as well. And this is what forms the curve of the, the cup. And then I'm just following my lines um, all the way down to where um, we do the lines there at the center front. And then I'm going to cut it and put a piece of tape. I would use masking tape, I don't have any. This is not a client dress, so don't, don't kill me, y'all. I'm using uh, just regular magic tape. And I'm gonna make sure to sew from the V-neck there uh, down to the bottom on both sides. And then I'm also sewing the other side. And then here I am just following all of the lines sewing uh, the bottom cut piece and I'm easing that in as well to make sure that it's nice and curved. I'm sewing that and I'm making, making sure to tuck the ends underneath the, the previous bone that we sewed. I hope uh, you, you guys can see this a little bit better than I'm explaining it. I suck at explaining things. And then I am taking another quarter inch piece and I'm reinforcing the side of the cup area. And this should be super easy guys if you marked your bones. Now I'm just taking more quarter inch bones and I am sewing it to the cup area, making sure not to ease in any fabric. You wanna sew this to every inch or every millimeter of pieces of fabric here. You wanna make sure that um, you're really defining that cup shape with this boning. And I'm sewing in the last kind of uh, curved piece that supports the bottom of the bust there making sure to tuck all the ends in. And now I'm sewing a half inch bone on the princess seam. So this goes from the top neckline all the way down to where um, we want to, where we're stopping all of the boning. So in this case, it was 13 centimeters below the waistline, but I suggest that you make it longer. It just depends. Um, and I'm sewing both sides of that bone. And then I'm sewing the diagonal bone that we marked as well that's going to be a half inch bone as well and then after i did this i realized that i needed to support the inner bust too so i just sewn another diagonal bone there's no um method to this at all just kind of the same as it was on the other side and then you want to just finish off the bottom of all of the bones and this is what it looks like when it's all finished and you want to do the same thing on the other side now that I have that all nice and sewn, I'm going to put it back onto the dress form and I'm gonna put the face on it because it's time, to, it's time to attach them together. So I'm just pinning them there at the princess seam and then adjusting it to make sure that everything matches. And then I am going to close the back just to make sure that the back can still close with the structure layer. And now I am just smoothing everything and pinning everything together. You guys, you want to use a lot of pins to make sure this is nice and even and that the face layer is not shifting or being sewn onto itself. You just want to make sure to use a lot of pins. And I'm speaking from experience, guys. I've had to re-sew this like three times. Not this particular dress, but before. So you guys want to make sure to use quite a bit of pins. And then we're going to go, after we finish pinning it, we're going to go ahead and take it to the sewing machine and sew it together. Now, I wanted to take this time out to ask you guys to give this video a like if you like this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I do a lot of awesome uh, wedding dresses 
wedding dress videos like this and I have two more wedding dresses that I have planned as of yet and hopefully more um, as the year becomes to uh, comes to an end so make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you guys can be alerted when I post so I'm just going to go ahead and pin this all the way around and, and also make sure to pin the side seams and also pin the back now here I realized that for some reason my structure layer stuck just a little bit short which is fine so I just zipped it up just to make sure that it will still fit and then I pinned it and zipped up because you don't want any tension back there And then I'm going to sew them together. I'm using a zipper foot so I can get nice and close to the edge of that boning. You really want to be right on, to, um, not on top of the boning, but right where the boning stops is where you want to go ahead and sew this so that the boning can shape the neckline properly. And I usually don't uh, try to sew over my pins. But in this case, I'm making sure to leave the pins in where they're needed. And then I'm also going right down to where the pins cross in the middle and pivoting and going back up. That's going to really create a nice sharp neckline. And I'm also doing the same thing for where the side seam kind of meets the back piece there. Next time I do this dress, I probably will do the back a little bit different. I'm not sure how. I would need to experiment. Now I'm going to trim down my seam allowance and clip into my curves and clip into um, right there on the, the center front neckline to make sure that everything's nice and flat. And then I'm going to add some tailor tacks to tack my structure layer, some loose ones, to tack my structure layer down to my face piece so it's not shifting when we're taking the dress on and off. And I'm making sure to only catch my underlining. I'm not catching my, um, my face layer at all. And then you want to also do that to, uh, I have another point, a uh, couple points pinned there and I'm doing it to there. And then I'm adding my waist stay. Don't make the mistake I did and cut your waist stay too short and still try to sew it in and think it's gonna work because it's not. This is what my structure layer looks like. I have the gown on the dress inside out because I wanna make sure it fits. And then I also need to catch stitch down the back of that, the back of my structure layer. So I did that. And then I started to uh, pin the straps on. Now initially on my drawing, I had the straps cross at the front, which was really pretty guys. But I noticed that when I had my straps cross at the front, there's not enough tension um, on, the, on the bodice piece since it's backless for uh, to pull the bodice piece nice and taut and have it nice and uh, lay flat in the front. So I decided to cross my straps in the back instead. So uh, you'll probably see the changes uh, coming up here pretty soon. Now at this point, I decided that I wanted to mess around with the appliques. So I started to pin them onto the dress form. And then I am hand basting them in. Y'all, this took forever. And I usually don't uh, hand sew in my appliques. I usually glue them. But I decided to hand base them because I didn't have any glue. Now I am attaching the lining. Notice I didn't put the appliques up to the neckline because the lining needs to be attached and I'm gonna bag it out this time. So I'm putting the lining and the face right sides together and I'm making sure that everything is nice and smooth and I'm matching the raw edges and then I'm just gonna pin all the way around making sure that everything is nice and smooth and even and that all of my points match and you wanna make sure your strap is sitting nice and straight when you pin it so that we're not um, sewing it in kind of crooked. So I'm pinning down my side seam down the back and then I'm gonna go back and do the neckline and uh, around the other side. When it comes time to finish off the zipper when we get closer, uh, I want to explain kind of what I like to do and I learned this from Frocks and Frolics. I like to give credit where credit's due. So I take the lining piece and I fold the seam allowance over and then I fold the seam allowance of the zipper tape over that and pin it. And that is the perfect way to finish off your zipper when you have a lining. Um, now I am finishing off the neckline, making sure to match edge to edge and pin that nice and neat all the way around, making sure to use as many pins as possible because you don't want your lining to shift. I think the lining for me is like the most important part because that's what the bride sees when she's putting her dress on that's what's against her body so i like to make sure that my lining is nice and pretty 
I wouldn't have put a um, waist seam in my lining if I had enough fabric to cut it whole, but I didn't. So I put the waist seam there and I think it's still fine. So I'm just doing the same thing that I did on the other side, on this side, making sure to pin it as much as possible to make sure that there's no shifting. almost forgot to add the hanging uh, loop so I just took a piece of ribbon and measured how long I wanted it and then I'm just inserting that where I want them to go now I am still using a zipper foot and I'm sewing once again as close to the edge of the boning as I can and I'm sewing all the way around I like to baste this first so I baste it with a five millimeter stitch and then I like to turn it out to see how it looks and if it looks good and then I sew it again with a 2.5 millimeter stitch that just ensures that if I had an issue with the way the neckline was sitting, uh, at a five millimeter stitch, it's easier to rip out and it causes less damage to the fabric than sewing it on a straightaway with a regular stitch. So I'm doing that. making sure to take a lot of care of this um, the V part of the neckline that's like one of the most important parts Okay, and now it's time to attach the appliques again. Notice that I took all the appliques off because I didn't like the way they were placed. And I decided that instead of um, putting them on as full appliques, I actually cut them all apart and put them on um, as separate little pieces so that I can control what it looks like. And I actually like it better this way. I felt that the other way I was doing it was a little bit too dense and a little bit too um, symmetrical, if that makes sense. You want your lace to kind of be fluid. So I am gonna go ahead and pin all the appliques on there and then rebase them. Y'all, I was so tired. I was hand sewing for like two days to sew all these appliques on there that I just gave up and ordered me some glue. <laughs> I ordered some glue and glue. Um, and it came just in time for me, for me to finish the back pieces. And this is what it looks like when it's all pinned together. I haven't sewn them all down yet. And I have the straps crossing in the back. extra appliques to the spaghetti straps because I think that will make the straps look a little bit more delicate so I'm adding that there and I'm actually going to hand sew these ones down because I don't want to restrict the movement of the straps at all with the glue and sometimes the glue may do that so I'm just kind of figuring out where I want to place the appliques and I'm going to pin them down and hand sew them y'all see that little blue dress in the back that's the dress that I made for my little girl for her graduation. And of course, I got a zipper from my local Joann's and the first time zipping it up, guess what? It broke. I'm so tired of Joann's, y'all. I'm petitioning their freaking zippers. I'm tired of it.
I decided not to have that little flower there at the center of where the strap crossed because it made it really hard to take it off my dress form. Now, uh, a human it can probably get in, in and out of it, but a human's not going to be wearing this dress. So, um, well, at least not for now. So I decided to just remove that. But here it is. Um, this is what it looks like when I'm sewing it on. I think it's really pretty and I wish I could have um, kept it on there, but I didn't. So now I'm showing you that I'm just going to go ahead and close this slit because I think that's my train is big enough. Well, my skirt is big enough. And then I'm also showing you how I'm going to hem the bottom of the face with horsehair and then the bottom of the lining with just a rolled hem. And then I'm also going to add trim to it. So I did all that off camera and this is what it looks like. Gorgeous, y'all. So I'm now adding the trim and I thought I can sit in front of my TV and watch Game of Thrones over again for the third time. <laughs> so I'm, I am pinning on the, um, the trim and I must admit that I should have done this a little bit neater, um, but I kind of was, I did this in between uh, waiting for my girls to get off school. So I kind of did it a little bit faster, but next time I will take my time a little bit more. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin it all around. And I uh, attached this um, with a little bit of glue. And then after I glued it, then I hand sewed it all down too, because with the trim piece, you kind of want it to be on there as tight as possible. So I kind of doubled up on that just to make sure um, that it's on there really good because you don't want a bride to step on her dress and her trim to come off. You'll be getting bad reviews on Facebook. I'll be telling you that. Anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the trim all the way around and I will be back. And this is what it looks like when all the trim is pinned. Excuse my mess, y'all. I'm try. I was trying to do this quick, so I have kind of scissors and and pieces everywhere. So now I decided to add buttons to cover the zipper, and this is what it looks like once I have finished the whole dress. Now, y'all, I made this dress in four days, and I'm so proud of myself. I cannot wait to finish more projects. Um, tell me what you guys think down below in the description, and as always, I will see you in my next one.